Hey everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. For me it's good, maybe going to be maybe early evening. It's about six o'clock or something like that here today. Today is June 1st. So let's get started in case you didn't hear me. I apologize, my, my voice was lower as we began. But good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. So let's read out of our daily reflections. So for today's topic, it's June 1st, because today is June 1st. And for my uh, my friends and my family, uh, happy happy Pride. Today is the beginning of Pride. Uh, summer started over the weekend, and uh, just a lot of great things happening. If you got a promotion, congratulations. You know, babies were being born, congratulations. Birthdays, happy birthdays. and. I hope I don't sign callous for doing that, but I just, I'm, I'm really excited for y'all. Great things are happening in this world. Well, while not so great things are happening, uh, great things are also happening. So thank you, God, for the balance, right? If it was all a veil of tears like it once was, says a big book, who, who, who'd want it? Who'd want this life that we have today? So thank you, God, for my recovery. Thank you for my friends and family that are watching, and it, I hope it helps somebody. And if it doesn't, thank you, God, for this opportunity to still be able to share my experience, strength, and hope with you guys. So let's get started. And we'll get started with daily reflections. Our reading today is June 1st. It says, a changed outlook. Our whole attitude and outlook upon life will change. That's straight out of Alcoholics Anonymous, page 84. When I was drinking, my attitude was totally selfish, totally self-centered, my pleasure and my comfort came first. My pleasure and my comfort came first. Oof. Now that I am sober, sober, self-seeking has started to slip away. My whole attitude toward life and other people is changing. For me, the first A in our name stands for attitude. My attitude is changed by the second A in our name, which stands for action. By working the steps, attending meetings, and carrying the message, I can be restored to, to sanity. Action is the magic word. With a positive, helpful attitude and regular AA action, I can stay sober and help others to achieve sobriety. My attitude now is that I'm willing to go to any lanes to stay sober! Exclamation point. So today's topic Today's reading, what it's talking about is the nine step promises. And the ninth, during the ninth step, okay, we'll talk about the ninth step a little bit more um, later on. If you're curious, just ask me and I will, in the comments and I'll talk to you about the, uh, about the ninth step. What I like to talk about is, is my attitude. <clears throat> and how, how my attitude, it says our whole attitude, our whole attitude, and I'll look upon life with change. That means that for me today, when I see things, I don't see them the way that I used to see them. When I see things today, I'm not looking at them like, oh, how can I get it for me? What can I do for me? What? Today, I had a serious conversation at work with my boss and it was, it was hard. It was hard. It was hard for one, for me to To speak up for myself not that i'm being hurt or nothing like that i mean work is great i love my i love my job at heb okay that's that's perfect it's awesome my bosses are great and they're trying to do right by me and they want to see how how they're asking me how can we do that how can we help you they're asking me how can we help you and i'm sitting there like oh uh, i want this i want that 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 right but I don't want to live like that no more. Because I know that today, they see my value. I don't have to brag about it. They see my work ethics. I don't have to brag about them. They see my passion. I don't have to brag about it. All I can do is answer the question. That's it. I've never been able to answer the question. Sometimes too, people will say things and I'm just like, oh, what do I say? Oh, what does that mean? And I'm able to ask, what does that mean? What do you mean by that? 
Can you explain that to me? Those are those are healthy conversations. I know they sound cheesy, but they work. So today when I was <clears throat> sitting with my boss and she was asking me, she was pretty much telling me, Chris, I value you. What can I do to make your situation better? Mm -hmm. And And I, I was, I was floored because it's, it's something that I've been praying for. I've been, it's something that, that, <clears throat> that I didn't, that I didn't ask any one single person for. It's, I've just been praying about it and just waiting. And I'm still waiting because I haven't got the answer to my answer. But with that, with that piece of information that I got today, I, I felt blessed. I felt blessed just by the conversation. I felt blessed. And I'm so grateful that this program has taught me. Um, or that, well, that this program has changed me. It has. It has changed me because that conversation, had we had it five years ago, 10 years ago, oh, 20 years ago, we would end up, we would have never had that conversation 20 years ago. But even five years ago, I was not able to handle that conversation. Even six months ago, who knows where that conversation would have led me. But today, today because of my continuous action, today because of me showing up to meetings, today because of, you know, doing my purpose. What is my purpose? To carry the message, right? To the still suffering alcoholic, to those who extend their hand for help. It's my responsibility. To be there, I like that responsibility. I take it serious. I'm passionate about it. So my attitude today was able to show up a little bit different. It was less selfish. Because deep down I know this is what I need. But I wanna I wanna I almost feel like I wanna earn what I need. And in the end, the conversation ended with, I'll do whatever it takes. Why? Because I know. I know that as employers, they expect certain things for the employees. It's a business, bottom line. Does HEB always think about money over matter, money over their people? Not always. If you've ever worked for them, they, they don't really, not, they don't really think about that. They think about they care about their people, their people first. They always put people first, and I, and and I. It's just not. I'm not promoting HEB, but I'm just saying I had a good. I had a I had a, an, a beautiful experience today, but it it wasn't um, it wasn't all cherry. It wasn't all awesome. They were like, here, Chris, this is yours. Boom, go with it, and you ain't gotta do nothing. They asked me what I wanted, and it was hard to ask for what I wanted. Because I'm not as selfish oh. as I used to be. I I had, I asked for what, what I wanted. You know, I told him, I just said, this is this is what I think would, would be, this is what I think oh. is the answer to your question. And uh, what's good is that I had to force it. I didn't have to explain myself. I didn't have to... Um, Make excuses for my limitations. I didn't have to do any of that. All I, all I had to do was answer the question. All I had to do was answer the question, and that has uh, that's that's the magic that they're talking about in this program. That that is, that is the magic of my action, of going to meetings, of doing doing the next right thing, of not focusing just on me the whole time. Do I focus on me sometimes? Yeah, I have to. <laughs> I, I have to sometimes. I have to make sure I get taken care of. I have to make sure I get fed. I gotta make sure I take a bath. I gotta make sure I make my phone calls that I'm supposed to make. You know, I make sure I show up to work. I make sure that, uh, that I'm doing my job right. I make sure that if I don't understand what I'm doing, that I'll ask for more information. So I do have to think about myself sometimes in that way. But I also think about what's good for others. Even in my prayers, I say, God, I want, I want the, 
I want the best for all parties involved. And that's different because before I used to say, God, this is what I want, this is what I want, this is what I want. But like he was Santa Claus. For a long time, I thought he was Santa Claus. He's still my Santa Claus. In the sense that, that, in the sense that he's mindful enough to know what I want and what I need. And then when the time comes, I get that. I get it all. I get it all. I ain't got to wait for Christmas. I get it all, all the time. I'm highly favored. I really believe that. I really, I believe that. I'm blessed and highly favored. I love my walk with Jesus. I love my walk uh, in recovery. I love what I do. Um, today I'm dressed up because I'm gonna go celebrate with one of my with one of my friends who's celebrating four years of sobriety today, and I'm very excited. And we support each other through that because it's not easy. It's not easy to stay sober. Some days, when you're going through a breakup, or when you're losing your house, or when you change your careers and it <clears throat> well, when you change your careers and it and it didn't it didn't turn out the way you thought it was going to turn out you took a risk and now you're now you're wondering why you took it you know i, I know it's not easy but i know i know i know but what i do know is that when i do what's what they tell me what they ask for me to do in this book um of Alcoholics Anonymous, and you know, and for those of those of us, maybe you're not in recovery. Maybe you, maybe, uh, maybe, um, maybe you read the Bible. That's cool too. I read the Bible too. I have tons of Bibles. I got about four Bibles. The other day, I was in a meeting, and some guy was like, "Hey, Chris, I found this in my mom's house, and you were the first person I thought of. I'd like to give it to you." And it was in a little box, and it was a Bible. It was a Bible. So. I get it. I read that too. So whatever, um, whatever's guiding you today, you know that that person, that power. Well, it can't be a person. It really can't be a person. Even even though I believe Jesus was a person at once, it, if a person um, can help us and guide us, not necessarily be our God though. That's that's where that's where there's a little line. It's like you if you get if you think. This is how you know if you. This is how. This is how I, you know if you if uh, if you're making somebody else your god. If you ask them for, <laughs> if you ask them for something and you and they say no and you feel like your whole world's gonna end, they're your god. If they, if the person doesn't make as much time for you as you like them to and um, you feel like you're not good enough then you're you're making them your god so people they can help you they can guide you i mean we do it all the time i do it my sponsor does it therapists do it preachers do it pastors do it you go on youtube you can find a million just google any problem your any mental issue or anything you're going through and there'll be a million people on youtube and on face or on Facebook, helping you that can guide you through it, right? Guide, guide is the word. I am a guide. I am not God. My sponsor, he is a guide. He is not God. My therapist, they help me get clear on a lot of things that I was dealing with. They guided me to some freedom. But she's not my God. I have. God is my God. So. God doesn't have to be your God. But I really. I, honestly. And I keep saying that. But the truth is to me. Is I don't, I don't think. I mean. I think everything leads to him. Everything leads to that. Everything leads to the moon. Everything leads to the, to the sun. Everything le leads to the stars. Everything leads. Everything is up there. Everything is up north. Even Santa Claus. When we think of Santa Claus up north, I don't think this way. I think this way. God, stars, sun, moon, spirits. They're all up. They're all higher than us. So, <clears throat> I don't want to get too caught up. Um, and um, I don't, I don't, um, I don't want to debate, you know. I'm just here to, to tell you that... <clears throat> 
if you're out there feeling hopeless, you're out there feeling like there isn't, there's no solution, you're out there feeling like there is no help, I'm here to tell you that there is a solution. There's hope and there's help. I had to pray about it. And then I had to ask the people that God put in my life, I had to ask them for it if I could. Um, so that's part of my changed outlook on my life today. So they told me when I got here that, and I believe it today, that recovery is an inside job. That when I recovered on the inside, then when the inside changed, the outside would change. So Chris had to get me, I had to get rid of a lot of that stuff that wasn't working anymore. And the only way that I could do it um, for me was to get in recovery, to stay in recovery, to work these steps, to take action in my life today. To be a part, to be a cooperative component in my life. I could pray for all the cooperative components. I could pray for the girl. I could pray for the job. I could pray for, for the, for the, for the house, the car. I could pray for it all, and I can't even get it with little or no action. But how do I keep that? Well, I gotta clean my house. Gotta wash my car. Gotta pay my bills. Gotta show up to work. Keep saying it over and over. This is what I do. This is what I do. Simple things that make my life great. And 20 years ago, I was not that person. 20 years ago, I was the person who would get off of work, buy some alcohol, and go in my room and, and drink myself. Drink, just drink, drink till I passed out. And my room was dark. My house is not dark today, but my room was dark. And if I wasn't doing that, I was out. When I would get invited, right? Because at the end, nobody invited me anywhere. And if I and if I got invited anywhere, <laughs> it would probably be like they would probably be like, "Okay, we're gonna invite him," but oh, I don't really want to. And uh, people would invite. I think they would just feel sorry for me in the end. And I don't blame them. I wouldn't. It's hard for me to be here and say I wouldn't want to hang out with me because I love myself enough today to say that if that was you, I'd want to hang out with you. But you know what? If I if I was hanging out with you, I'd probably be wanting to try to change you. Why? Because I know. I know this program works. I know that there's hope out there. I know that there's a solution that works. Right? Um, so <clears throat> who I am today, man, it's not who I used to be. And I'm, and I'm I can't say I'm grateful enough. I really am. I uh, I hope that if you that if you you know that that if you're going through that that you will reach out that you will find the get in the phone book and go to the A's and find yourself a meeting. That's what I did, but it's a lot easier now. You just go on YouTube, you just go on Google's, you just go Google knows everything. But Google's not the only one. But Google knows everything. <laughs> I'm not saying that I do. I'm just saying that there's other uh, search engines. That's all. But Google's pretty... Um, they know a lot. So, you know, just Google something. It could be anything. Um, I, t I took... Um, I took... Um, one time I was... My friend was like... Man, I really think... My friend was like... Man, I really think you should go to Slaw, right? Which is Sex and Love Addicts Anonymous. I was like... Man, I don't know. I don't know. She goes, just take the test. Just take a test. She, and I said, well, where's the test? And she said, go on Google and just Google, do, just Google, am I uh, a love addict? And I was like, okay. So then I, so then I Googled, am I a love addict? And then it, and then this page pop up, you know, you may be a, lo a love addict if, right? So it said, so it, it was like a 10, 10 questions. Uh, if you do this, and I was like, yeah, if you do this, yeah. And then some of them were hard. It's like, do you do this? I'm like, <clears throat> yeah, I do. And um, and now you can now now there's a there's another one. Okay, let me finish my story, then I'll tell you. So so what came out of that was that now every day through my email I receive a a, a reflection 
on love addicts. And that man, that has helped me so much. I swear, like, I'm, I'm such a better partner today than I ever was in my entire life. I'm such a better friend today than I ever was in my entire life. Why? Because I learned what Chris was doing in his mind as soon as he would meet somebody. And I had to pray about that. Why? Because I can't remember. I, could, I can wish it away, but man, it takes a lot more work than wishing it away. I got to write some stuff down. I got to start doing things different. And I realized that Chris has intimacy issues. What makes me a love addict? Because I like the game and I bring him in and then I tell him, no, no, never mind. And then I go and I woo the other one. I bring him in and then they get real close and I say, no, no, no never mind. Those are intimacy issues. That's a love addict. I get the high off of making people fall in love with me. And then I tell them to get lost. That's crazy. That's crazy. Sorry. But I do that. I did that. I don't do that anymore. Thank you, God. Because I'm a recovery for that too. And every opportunity, every date that I go on, every person I meet, I get to... I get to use what I've learned to be able to make relationships. And I'm not in a relationship. I haven't been in a relationship in a long time, but I have tons of friends and I keep, and I know where I know where the line is between friends and lovers. I know how to treat a friend like a friend and a lover like a lover. I know how to um to stop my mind from going places it it doesn't need to be going with. Right? So so I feel from that. And all it took was me taking action. A simple action of Googling on the internet. How, how do I know if I'm a love addict? And now you can even, um, what I was going to say earlier was, you can, you can even Google characteristics of a love addict. Those are good. There's like 20 of them. <laughs> and I can relate to, to most of them. To a lot of them. Uh -huh. But, you know, slowly but surely, I can look at that list and say, man, I used to do that. No, I don't do that no more. But when I do it, I can say, whoa, Chris, you're doing it again. And then I do it anymore. Get my mind busy doing something else. Get my, my mind focused on my work. Get my mind focused on my career. Get my mind focused on, what I, on my videos. Get my mind focused on my recovery from alcoholism too. Get my mind fo focused on... Um, did I walk the dogs today? Hey, let me clean my house. Hey, let me go wash the car. Do something, but get myself out of that. Why? Because those thoughts, the same, same as same thoughts as with alcohol. Man, a beer sounds good right now. So hot outside. Whoa, Chris. No, 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 no. Why don't you go get yourself some water? I got Propel today. I got Propel kiwi strawberry. Buy yourself a, your your best favorite water. Drink a soda if that's all if that's all you can. Drink eat a Hershey's. Do something. Just don't do that. Same thing with the uh, with the uh, you know, with those thoughts when you're a sex and love addict. You're like, man, that goes pretty, man. I would love I would love to hang out. I would love to You fill in the blanks. Right? You know you know when you're there. You know what kind of things you tell yourself. If you're struggling with this. And if you're not, well, you're not. You'll just be like, well, I don't get that, Chris. Maybe, maybe. I don't think like that. <laughs> maybe you don't. Um, and that's okay. I wouldn't. There's some things that I think that I that I go through that I that I hope never, that no people go through. Why? Because they're, 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 they can get confusing. They can get hard. They can, they can be, they can be horrible thoughts. Uh, so, but I'm getting better. I'm getting better uh, and better every day. Uh, I'm not. A, I don't. I'm not a murderer, so I'm grateful for that. Sorry, somebody's calling me. Uh, my friends are calling me. They're like, "You ready? I'm ready. I'm ready to go eat cake and eat donuts and drink coffee and cheer for my friend who's turning four years today. And and I'm ready to get back home." I'm not ready to get back home. We can stay out as late as we, we want today. Why? Because I don't drink. And I know that tomorrow I'm not going to wake up with a hangover. If I don't drink tonight, I'm not going to wake up with a hangover. If I don't drink tonight, I'm not going to wake up and somebody 
some a stranger's bed if I don't drink tonight. I'm not gonna <clears throat> I'm not gonna, you know, miss work tomorrow. So so <clears throat> I have a lot to be grateful and, and uh I hope that you continue watching. I really, really wanna talk a lot about the ninth step um that which in which these promises are 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 promised, right? That we will have a new outlook, uh, a new attitude, and outlook upon life will change. Um, so these these nine step promises, man, they're 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 huge because of what the ninth step does for us. And ninth step just and I'll end with this: the ninth step says that um, made amends to all persons we had harm, except when to do so will injure them or others, right? But man, making amends has really, really healed me from so many past hurts. I mean, like some of them, you can't even tell they're there anymore. And some of them, they're still tender. But the healing that comes from the ninth step, whoa, it's amazing. If, you, if you're if you recovering, you have not done the ninth step, don't give up. Don't quit. Get there. If after you do the ninth step, you say, you know what, Chris is full of crap. None of this, none of this changed my life. Okay. And you can call me a liar. And um, if you still want to go out and drink, then drink. If you, if you still need more research, then do the research. But if you don't, stay here. Stay there. Stay in your group. Stay with your family. Stay with your tribe. Don't go anywhere. Just stay. If things aren't good right now, they're going to get better. And if things aren't great for you right now, then be a testimony to somebody that this program works. I don't know how. I don't know where. But you do. Go out there and glow. Be your best glow today. Help somebody in need. You can do it. I know you can. Thank you for your time, folks. Thank you for your time. Uh, spending time with you has been a blessing to me. Um, I'm I'm eager to share with you some great things that are in the mix and the works right now. As they come about, as they come to fruition, that um, then I will start sharing with sharing with you uh, the things that are happening behind the scenes here at home and in my work and in my um, my relationship with others. But till then, just know that that I'm here and I'm I'm eager. I'm ready. I'm open. I'm I'm getting out of the way. I'm getting out of the way. I'm just letting God do what he does best. Take care of Chris. Nobody takes care of me like he does. Um so if um that's not to say that individuals don't. My mother took care of me, my grandmother takes care of me, my aunts and uncles, they send me love messages all the time call me all the time to check on me they take care of me people take care of me too but god well folks thank you i love you all have a beautiful beautiful wonderful rest of your evening and uh see y'all tomorrow bye bye